DeepMind released Gato this month, May 2022. Gato means cat in Spanish. And there's been a bit of confusion around what it actually means. I don't know how many researchers have actually understood the paper. The paper's quite dry. So let's put it in context. Let's get a bit of perspective on what DeepMind Gato actually means. More than a decade ago, back in 2006, I remember putting my niece on my shoulders and walking her to see Honda's Asimo robot. Do you remember this? It was originally designed by Honda. It got handed over through SoftBank and another few people. Um, and it was amazing. It could walk and run and understand language and pour coffee, these kinds of things. I remember telling my niece that this was the future. Robots would be a big part of her life. And last year, Elon Musk added some heft to the world of cybernetics, announcing a concept robot called the Tesla Optimus. Now, given that Elon had a hand in both companies, Tesla and OpenAI, I wonder if the physical robot could be easily backed by a large language model, just like OpenAI's GPT-3. In fact, OpenAI in San Francisco originally had two teams. They had a language team and a robotics team, and both were kind of red versus blue, trying to outcompete each other. One thought that you needed language to get to AI, one thought that you needed physical embodiment to get to AI. In October 2019, they demonstrated their five-fingered robotic hand powered by an AI model. It had 13,000 years of experience in the training data, and it could even solve Rubik's Cubes with a glove on the hand or having the fingers tied together. Unfortunately for them, in October 2020, they made the decision to stop researching robotics completely. They squashed the team. I was actually working for several years on robotics, and as of recently, we changed the focus at OpenAI, and I'm actually, I disbanded the robotics team. Which brings us to Gato, 1.18 billion parameters. Not just language, not just language plus vision, but language plus as many different modalities as they could mix in with it. Let's look at why this thing is so small and actually comparatively how small it is. This is a visualization I did of a lot of the major models leading up from GPT-1 uh, a few years ago, right the way through to Palm and beyond. You'll notice that if we put Chinchilla in here at 70 billion parameters, it would not be that big compared to the other models. And if we put Flamingo in here at 80 billion parameters, of course, it would also not be that big. But then we bring in the cat, Gato, and it would be about as small as that little arrowhead on the right there, somewhere between the size of GPT-1 and GPT-2. And the language portion of Gato is only the size of GPT-1. It's about 100 million parameters. The reason for this is that Gato is a proof of concept. They're not actually trying to show you the finished AI model. That would be pretty scary, even though it's on its way. It's proving the concept that we can do more than language in a transformer-based model. And it's amazing what they've done. All I need to do now is make it bigger. In fact, DeepMind's research director, Nando, has said that the game is over. He said, scale is essential to AI make these models bigger. And when people didn't understand what he was saying, he even went and asked the Flamingo model, which you might've seen in my other videos, to clarify that he meant we need to focus on scale. We need to focus on taking this small Gato model and blowing it up to say a trillion and eventually we'll get to quadrillion because that's just how fast this stuff is going. Here's what Gato is. Number one, language tasks. Number two, vision tasks. Number three, physical world tasks. Now let's put that in plain English. Gato can now talk and write. Gato can now see and recognize. Gato can now move and manipulate things. That's quite a few of our human senses, but we can easily add taste smell, and you may have seen my video about hearing via SymphonyNet, the transformer-based model that is writing orchestral music by itself. Let's start with the language part. Remember that this one is quite small. GPT-3 might be a thousand times larger. Again, a proof of concept. We're just trying to show that this thing 
has language and then it has a whole lot more amazing stuff in it. Here's my Synthesia.io avatar again. He's going to be playing the part of the text conversation that appeared in the paper. Do you have any fiction book recommendations? I devoured a lot of science fiction in my youth. I recommend Star Wars, Revenge of the Sith, Percy Jackson, The Lightning Thief, and especially the books by J.G. Ballard, such as Stardust and Canyon Song. What is the capital of France? Paris. What are some things to see in Paris? Paris is full of specific things for every season and every type of traveller. Firstly, there are the great museums in the Avenue des Champs-Élysées, like the Louvre or the difficult but fabulous Notre Dame Cathedral. But what we like best is to visit the fabulous Bastille, once the prison of the Sovereign Kings. This was the scene of the Terror of 1789, when the revolution began. So it does pretty well in language processing. Let's try it with image recognition. This is also only about 100 million parameters, but it's very similar to what you saw in Flamingo. It's using almost the same concept of transformer-based image recognition. Check out what it can see. A white horse with a blue and silver bridle. A baseball player pitching a ball on top of a baseball field. A group of children eating pizza at a table. Which brings us to move and manipulate. There's actually two pieces to this. There's the gameplay, where it's simulating button presses for an Atari controller, as well as real robotics. So moving a physical robotic arm based on training in simulation. Again, all transformer based and all encoded into tokens, which are pretty much like normal language, normal English words or binary. Uh, it's been flattened from pressing a button to do 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 do. Gato was trained on 64 2D Atari games, and these are designed to help it understand the physical world and how to solve challenges. Look at something like Ms. Pac-Man from 1981. This Atari game was designed for a little Pac-Man to be able to escape the ghosts while eating little things. Gato wasn't told what was actually going on here. It's just shown a screen every now and again, and it's emulating button presses to be able to get around that maze. And it's obviously learning very well. Look at Pitfall from 1982, a guy swinging over a lake of crocodiles. <laughs> and again, Gato doesn't know what's going on here. It is shown the images and then it is learning how to swing across and how to bring up its score. The same with Solaris, this game from 1986. Still two-dimensional, but it's allowing a, a Gato to go and learn about how this actually works. Gato only sees a few pixels when it's playing these games. I'm trying to avoid going deep into tech from the paper, but here's one image that's going to be really useful. And it's showing how it is segmenting into patches each of these screenshots so that Gato can navigate and try and understand what's going on. It sees just a few scanned pixels, and this is comparable to scanned digital photos from the 1950s. Have a look at this one. This is the first digital photo. It's from 1957. It was taken by Russell Kirsch, who fed a film photo through a digital scanner, and the resolution was terrible, 176 by 176 pixels. And that's a photo of his three-month-old son, Back in 1957, look how far we've come. Since then, we've got HD, 4K, 8K versions of three-month-olds now. The low resolution back then was due to the fact that the computer they used wasn't capable of storing more information. The low resolution in Gato is by design. It's for the proof of concept. They can scale this up from 1 billion parameters to 100 billion parameters to a trillion parameters really easily now that we know that it can be done. Let's talk about robotics. And Gato was trained on both simulated, so watching almost a CAD animation movement, and real world robotics. In fact, it's mastered 604 distinct tasks, all in real time, and all with real world robots. 
The majority of these tasks were performed by Gato at expert level, and in some cases it was doing stuff that it was not even taught how to do. Here's a physical version of the Canova Jayco arm from around 2018. It's got a lot of cool capabilities. It's got uh, three degrees of freedom, up to five degrees of freedom, where it can play around with each of its joints in the arm and actually interact with the physical world, which is super exciting. Gato was trained on a simulated version of this, so it was inside essentially like a, a CAD drawing or some animation inside the computer, so it could learn what it can and can't do, and also learn actually how to accomplish doing these amazing tasks. Gato then transferred the learnings from this Canova Jayco arm through to a Sawyer robot arm. And here's a video showing that Sawyer robot arm actually stacking blocks and this is one of the things that Gato was able to achieve even without being told what to do. In the case of Gato this month, it was stacking red, blue, and green blocks in different shapes and doing so quite successfully. Another part of the reason that Gato is so small is so that they could fit the entire model on the hardware inside these robots. So you've got the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090. This is a graphics card from a few years ago, and the GPU is used for inference and is actually part of the robot hardware. In order to build in parameters or inference with these parameters into the robot, they had to make sure that it was just under 1.2 billion parameters, enabling it to fit onto that hardware accelerator. This isn't anything like the pre-programmed robots from Boston Dynamics, you remember those? This is neural network-based responses in real time, just like Lita, but for movement. The robotics via Gato are achieving 100% success rates in things like opening and closing windows and button presses, all of which are using the transformer to find the most likely next best step, as in GPT-3 and Lita. So Gato is proving that you can join all three of these things together, language, vision and seeing, and then movement, including playing games with simulated key presses and then physical real movement of robots. There are a couple of little steps between here and the next big milestone, but I think it's gonna be like lightning. Look how fast DeepMind is releasing new models. You had Chinchilla released on the 29th of March, 2022, and then a month later, you had Flamingo, which used Chinchilla and was released on the 29th of April, 2022. That's 31 days between major releases of models. DeepMind, in fact, is going so fast that I think it's making OpenAI a little bit nervous. Here's the CEO posting about the fact that they're still cool and they're still going to be doing stuff that's 10x. <laughs> The next big milestone is coming. It's probably as simple as sticking this same transformer-based model into a robot. I think it's gonna look a lot like this. In any case, Gato is one of the most exciting things to come out of the world of artificial intelligence ever. And the fact that it's a generalist agent means that we are approaching artificial general intelligence. All we need to do now is make it bigger and bigger. Did you see the memo about this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have the memo right here. Love artificial intelligence? Excited by the explosive progress of integrated AI? I am. Join my private mailing list, The Memo. Did you get that memo? Yeah, I got the memo. Get priority access to my articles, videos, and behind the scenes tips as soon as they're released with a monthly or annual subscription. Yeah. Didn't you get that memo? Lifearchitect.ai slash memo. I have the memo.